Hey everybody, welcome back to another Step by Step, brought to you by Michigan Toy Soldier. And in this week's episode, I'll be walking you through the quick and dirty speed painting of a proxy model for a Death Corpse of Krieg artillery carriage. Let's kick this off. To begin, we prime this model with Black Primer by Badger Steinler's line. It's a great primer, it can come right out of the bottle, and it's easy to apply, and it dries to a great finish. I apply several thin and even coats to the model and then let it sit to dry for a little bit and then it's ready to go. From there I apply 3G's Command Green. 3G's a new line by AK Interactive or the new-ish and it's a great acrylic line to work with. It dries nice and flat or I should say more matte and it's tough as nails. It goes on like a dream and it's a wonderful paint to work with. Following up for the highlight is also another 3G color called Grey Green. This will serve as more of the atmosphere highlight of the model and it'll serve as also another great way to create some contrast with the different elements of the model. See like the barrel, the shielding around it, the different uh, tubing, <laughs> the supports, and even some of the base of the carriage itself. From there I apply a metal color, in this case Magnesium by Vallejo Metacolor. This stuff goes on as smooth as silk, it's easy to brush paint or airbrush if you really need to, and it's also a great starting point if you ever want to start using metal colors or metal paint on any type of model you're using. So from here I just take the side of the brush, go along the sides and apply a nice, even coat around all the metallic bits. From here it's time to apply a varnish. I use a satin varnish because it's the best of both worlds, not being too glossy but not being flat. Any varnish will do as long as it protects against the next step. We'll be creating definition using enamel washes. For this one, I'll use a dark wash by MIG Productions, along with a mixture of their Fast Dry Thinner by Optilung 502. The point of this step is to create definition by establishing the different dark points in the model and letting the capillary action of the enamel product work its way in there. So I apply it. It can be a little messy at times, but it gets in there and it gets in those recesses and does a job of creating nice dark. Once it's all dry, you'll see some different splotch marks. I go back in with my enamel thinner and start the cleanup process. Now the fun part is that you can take a nice larger brush like this, wet it down with some uh, the middle spirits or the fast dry thinner, and just start working the, your way around the model and even blending the uh, the enamel product back uh, in the recesses and even leaving a little bit of a film here and there to create a nice gradual layer. I will say I do prefer oils this part but since speed was the name of this game I went for a ready-made product that was easy for me to grab and just went for it. One thing to keep in mind though is that several passes may be needed depending on the model. You may find that you miss some spots like I did here and there, but you can always go back and touch it up. And once it's dry, you can see how nice it looks and I'm set to go on to the next step. Just kidding, I had to clean up one spot there. All right, here we go. Now for the enamel track wash. This is a fun method I picked up from Adam Wilder and it creates a nice bit of depth of either chipping or some discoloration in the paint that occurs naturally in armored fighting vehicles and also artillery pieces. It's a nice way to create um, different variation and even some subtle texture along the model to make it look a little more natural. And the joy of using an enamel product in this case is if I create any blotches that are a little too big or a little obnoxious, I can go back in with my enamel thinner and clean them up. Now on to chipping. For the first color, we're going to use a green, or green gray, sorry. Um, this is to create these superficial chips that are all around the model. Now, if you never really look truly at a tank, or in this case, an artillery piece, you'll see that the actual real life pieces get scuffed up all the time. There's a lot of little tiny superficial chips here and there, and that's what we're creating. And aside from creating nice chipping, we're creating a nice way to outline the different portions of the model instead of rather having to go for a full-on edge highlight. 
So now you're going to see I will take a brush, and if I want to emphasize certain parts of the model, I'll use that same paint to create a nice edge highlight. This isn't always necessary, but this is a gaming piece, so I want to create more of a strong contrast that can be seen across the table. Again, this isn't necessary, but this is more of a per piece of uh, personal preference I like to throw in here and there for my models. Now, contrary to popular belief, uh, when you're doing this type of work, these edge highlighting elements, you don't need to use the smallest brush out there. As long as it has a fine tip, any brush can be used. I prefer a slightly larger brush because it can hold more paint and more moisture. So I'm not always going back to my wet palette to go back in and get more paint. It's less time for me to sit going back and forth and I can keep on creating smooth, nice lines around the model. Next up is using the chipping color, in this case 3G's chocolate chipping color. For this, I go into all the, well not every one, but most of them, all the different uh, superficial scratches and create that nice chipped or exposed steel area. I like to get a nice color that's either a mixture of both black and brown, or in this case a nice dark brown to contrast a little bit with the green color. So I go around, just uh, hit the edges if I have to, and just mark in some spots that really look like they've been beat up quite a bit. Keep in mind, variation is a good thing to have. You don't need to go around and hit every superficial mark like I just erased here. Just enough to create some contrast between the really deep chips and also the lighter superficial chips. Again, not everything needs to be covered. Now is our last portion of this entire thing. I'm going to add some Muddy Ground by AK Interactive, and this will be a great base layer to create my ground effects. Now, I could go further with this step and apply you know, some different washes or even different textures if I want to, maybe some barbed wire, different other uh, basing elements. But just for the sake of getting this thing out on the table in one weekend like I did, and also to match my troops, I just kept at that. I can always go back and add more to these bases or these models in general with the amount of uh, the techniques I'm using currently. And there we go. It is all finished and ready for the tabletop. Again, I will emphasize this is done for speed. You can always go back in any case of these models and improve them by adding more details, more effects, but this is a great way of getting the models on the table and ready for a game in a very short time. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and also check out the Michigan Toy Soldier blog. I'm Jake Richards. Have a great one and enjoy your day.